All right, now Psalm 119. I do feel is very, very valuable to read, to read this entire chapter tonight. Um, if you hadn't noticed, Psalm 119, almost every single verse refers to God's law and it uses different terms. So it'll use the word law, word, judgments, precepts, testimonies. Okay. But they're all referring to basically God's word, God's law, God, you know, like, like it's, it's all the same concept. And I think there's only, I, I looked, I, I studied this out before. I think there might be like three verses out of the, all 176 that don't mention one of those key words that, that are describing that. But um, anyways, that's not what this is about. But, it, but, but that's not what my sermon's about. But this is about, um, obviously, Psalm 119 has a lot to do with God's laws. And there was, <clears throat> before I really get into this, um, what I'm preaching tonight on is Bible memorization. And so one of the things you've noticed in there is keeping God's word and keeping God's law and keeping his precepts. And hopefully you recognize that when we were reading through that. And we're going to dig into a lot of the verses here tonight. But this morning I preached a sermon about being thankful. Okay, man, and this is, this is all for introduction. There's another thing that I didn't mention that we need to be thankful for. I mentioned you know, our salvations and all the things that God's done for us and all these various things that we have in our life. But we need to be thankful for the printing press and the ease at which we can obtain the Word of God these days. You can literally go to a dollar store and get a King James Bible, get the complete, the entire Word of God, word for word, for one dollar. I mean, you could find a dollar on the street and have your fingers able to read all of God's words Amen. for us today. That is an amazing thing. And I'll tell you what, as I mentioned earlier this morning, it's easy to become complacent about the things that we take for, and to take things for granted that we have and they've just always been that way. It's always been around. It's always been available to just overlook those things and just assume, of course, it's always the way, it, you know, it's always there. Why would I ever not have the Bible? Why would I ever not have this? But for the vast majority of history, it was not that way. You know, obtaining books and having these things, the, the, the cost was just higher in general. There was a lot more work involved until we were able to just do this mass production with these printing presses and just be able to boom, 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 really net, just, just hammer out a bunch of copies that, um, that are all going to be the same because you're using the same typeset or whatever on the, on the printing press. And... Um, all throughout history, it has not been that easy for the church to really have at their fingertips so easily all the Word of God. Um, you know, obviously it wasn't impossible. People were copying out the Bible and the copies and copies and copies were going out. But it still wasn't something that just everybody had. That it was just so readily available. And... You know, in a lot of cases, a lot of people lacked education to read and write some of those things. Um, so what would happen is people relied on memorizing and memorizing portions of Scripture and whatever they had um, to, to memorize God's Word to keep it with them. And this is a concept now, that this concept of Bible memorization that is taught in Scripture, but it seems to have fallen by the wayside by and large. And one of the reasons I think it is is because pastors aren't memorizing the Bible, so they're not teaching about it. You know, I can't get up here and just be a hypocrite and just tell you guys, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, just like the Pharisees did when the Bible and Jesus was saying that they don't even lift a finger. He's saying, okay, do the things that they're telling you to do. But they, just because they don't do it, you know, you still ought to do the thing that they're saying to do that we're right. But I can't come up here as a preacher and just start telling, okay, you need to do all this stuff if I'm not doing it myself. And the, the, the preacher, the pastor is supposed to be someone who's leading the flock, who's taking the charge and leading, which is why every single Bible memory verse that we do as a church, I participate in that and I will do those things because I need to lead the way and show a good example for that. But we don't just do this for fun. I, obviously, we have 
you know, we have these Bible memory things, and they are fun, but that's not, that's not the point of it. It's, it's not so that you could just, you know, get the prize. The prize is an incentive. We're trying to, to get as many people involved in this as possible and, and, and to make some fun out of it and to be like, okay, cool, well, you'll get this prize and, and, and this other stuff is just to, to motivate people to do this. But really, and this is the re one of the reasons why I'm, I'm preaching this sermon tonight, is that this is taught in the Bible that you ought to be doing that. You know, forget the stupid prize. Forget everything else. We all need to be memorizing as much of God's Word as possible and keeping it in our heart. And we're going to be going through a lot of these, these verses in Psalm 119, but um, you don't have to turn there. Luke 11, 28 says this, but he said, Yea, rather, this was Jesus' response to said, you know, Blessed is the, the woman whose paps thou hast sucked. And it was talking about like, she was saying this to Jesus, like, like, you know, saying blessed is Mary. He responds to that and says, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Now, that word keep, I'm not going to say that every time you see the word keep, it automatically just means memorization. But think about that word keep. Okay, because the word keep is, uh, is important. When you keep, if I were to give you something and say, hey, this is yours, this is yours to keep. It means it's yours to retain. You're going to keep, you're going to have that and hold that and you don't have to give it back to me. Right? If I said this is yours to keep. Well, when we keep things, we're retaining them, right? We're doing them or, or you know, in this, in this sense, you're saying that hear the word of God and keep it. You know, we're not forgetful hearers, but doers of the work. Um, the Bible says that you're blessed if you hear the word of God and if you keep it. And I would, I would argue that if you memorize God's word, you are keeping it. I mean, you are keeping God's word in your heart. You're keeping it in your mind by memorizing it, by being able to, to, to continually go back to that word. It's, 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 in your, it's in you. It's in your head. And that God will bless you for that. And yet you will be blessed for that. And we're going to see that a little bit more in detail. Um, you know, and you could also think of when you hear the word of God and keep it, you're not just leaving the word of God at church where maybe you heard it at church. or You're not just leaving it in, back in your Bible, back on the nightstand where, where you read it at home. When you, when you keep it, you take it with you. That's what, that's what that keeping is. You need to be, be able to take it with you anywhere you go. We need to be able to have God's word in our heart and know what it says and keep it with us so that wherever you are and you're making decisions, you have God's word to guide you and to lead you because you're keeping it. It's with you. It's with you where you go. Um, Psalm 119 is an amazing chapter of the Bible all about God's law. As I mentioned before, almost every single verse mentions something of his testimonies, judgments, statutes, law. Um, let's look at verse number four. We're going to go back through a lot of this chapter now and look at some of these verses. Verse four of Psalm 119 says, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. We are commanded to keep God's precepts. What are his precepts? His laws. Right? We are to keep God's laws diligently. Well, for one, how are you going to know what God's laws are unless you, unless you get them from the Bible, unless you read them? And oftentimes, you know, you, you'll have conversations with people and there's a lot, of, a lot of confusion. Like, well, what does God's law really say? You know, there's a lot of questions. Well, how can you keep something if you don't really know it? If you don't really know what it says, how are you really going to be able to keep that law? Because a situation might come up and be like, well, I don't really know exactly what the Bible says about this. How, how can you trust yourself to keep the law then if you don't know it? Do you see where I'm going with this? And he says, to keep thy precepts diligently. That word diligent is important. Hey, it is work. You need to stay on top of it. You need to, to, to continue to just be like, I need to read it. That's, that's why reading, for one, is very important because in a way, the more you read that repetition, it will help you to, to memorize these things. Even if you don't memorize it word perfect, you could start to to remember a lot more of God's Word the more you read the Bible. I mean, over the, the past, I don't even know, however many years now that I've been reading the Bible through cover to cover, just 
just every day of my life reading the Bible, obviously you learn and you know more and more and more. So, so much of the Bible now, I could say that I know a lot, well, definitely a lot better than I used to. It used to be like, I mean, you don't even know what some of these books are and like, what does that even talk about? Someone can say, well, what's in Habakkuk? And you're like, I don't know. I don't know what's in Habakkuk. What does that even say? What, what are the, what, like, in, you just have no idea what types of verses, what it's even about. But hopefully over time, just, just by repetition of reading your Bible over being diligent to continue to read your Bible, you'll be like, oh yeah, Habakkuk, that's where, that's where Habakkuk's like having this communication with God and there's this invading army that's going to come in and he's asking him like, why are you using this wicked nation to come and judge us? And you, know, you, can, you can think back and be like, yeah, that's what that's talking about. You learn these things over and over by the repetition of reading and by diligently keeping thy precepts. But when it says to keep them, you know, I think we should go further of, of really keeping them in your heart by, by memorizing them and meditating on them. Let's look at verse number 8, Psalm 119, verse 8. He says, I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. So this is referring to, you know, some, like a judgment coming upon him, being forsaken and he's, he's pleading here in, in verse 8. He's like, I'm going to keep your statutes. Like, I'm going to keep them. Don't forsake me utterly. Verse number 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. So, you know, you could say, you know, pastor versions, you know, when it says keep, that just means like obey. And I'll agree. You know, I could say, okay, you know, yeah, we should obey it. But as I mentioned, how can you obey something if you don't know what it is? If you don't, if you don't really know what it says? One way you can know for sure what it says is by memorizing it. That way you don't have to have a doubt. No, this is what it says because I've memorized it because I know exactly what it says. That's going to help you to keep it by, by obeying it. But look at verse number 11. He says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart. He's taking God's word. He's saying he's hiding it in his heart that I might not sin against thee. This is, another, this is a, one of the main reasons why you should memorize the Bible. Memorizing verses is going to help you with the sins in your life. If you're struggling with a particular sin, I would, I would recommend start memorizing verses that pertain to that sin. If you have a problem, just, just for example, you're a man, you have a problem, you know, looking on women and you shouldn't be looking at them. Maybe you're married or, or not married. I mean, and you're just looking at women and you have lust in your eyes. Hey, start memorizing the verses of the Bible like where Jesus said, you know, if, if, that was, if you have looked upon a woman to lust after her in your heart, you've committed adultery with her already. Memorize in Job where he said, I've made a, a covenant with mine eyes. How then shall I look upon a maid? Read, you know, find these, as you're reading, find out these verses in the Bible. Look for them, write them down, and memorize them. That's why he says, I've hid my, th thy word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When you know God's laws and when it's in your heart, it's going to be a lot harder for you to sin because now all of a sudden you're going to be thinking, you'll be in a, situ you know, a situation, you'll see a woman walking around the street and then hopefully, boom, that, ver that verse that you've been me meditating on and memorizing and thinking about and, and, and trying to retain in your heart will all of a sudden just, just smack you right in the face and be like, oh, wow, no, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm not going to do this. God's word can do that for you. And, and whatever the sin may be, it doesn't, I mean, any, name the sin. Whatever it is that you may be struggling with. Maybe you're struggling with having patience and long-suffering. Hey, there's lots of verses in the Bible that talk about that, about enduring and about being content, about wh whatever it may be. Pick whatever area you want to work on in your life. I would start there, whatever it is. Start there, find some of those verses, even if it's just a couple verses. Say, I'm not good at memorizing. I, I just never have been good at, okay, can you memorize like three verses? I guarantee you, you can. Anybody can do that over time. You, you just, but you have to do it diligently. You can't just, just be, you know, half in, half out with it. You can't be lukewarm about wanting to do this and wanting to change. But we see here, he says, look, I, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. It's going to help you not to sin against God. The more you are focused on and meditating on God's word, especially in whatever area you're focused on, the more strengthened you're going to be against committing that sin. Does that mean you're never going to commit that sin again? No. But you're going to be strengthened. 
You're going you're gonna to have that there. I mean, the, look, the more I read the Bible, I know for a fact this is true because it happens to me. Look, I'm a sinner too. I have my own sins. So when, when my own sins start to pop up, I'll start thinking, here's a good example. Okay, I, I'm, I'm willing to share this one with you. I'm pretty busy. I generally don't get a lot of sleep. But, um, and I try not to, to just, just sleep in or, or oversleep or anything like that. I mean, if, if, if I have to stay up real late, then usually what I try to do is say, well, whatever, I still have to get up at this time and that's just the way it's going to be. But when... <laughs> I, I always just have this verse by my mind, like, how long will thou sleep, O sluggard? You know, and, and, and to motivate me to say, to say I don't want to be a sluggard. I don't, you know, I, I don't want to be lazy. I want to work hard. That's just one aspect. That's one area where, where you can be memorizing these things and keep them in your mind. And, and that verse pops in my mind quite a bit because... I, my alarm will be going off and you know, I don't want to get up. Man, I had a late night and I'm just super tired, but... You know, God's word can, can help you to overcome things. Or, um, you know, wasting time. The Bible says redeeming the time because the days are evil. You know, we, our time is precious unto us. We need to be, you know, whatever it is. You know, I don't want to keep on going on a tangent with that, with my personal sins. But, um, you know, whatever it is that applies to you, God, memorization of the Bible will help you tremendously. Let's look at a few more here. Look at verse number 15 of Psalm 119. He says, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Again, this is clearly talking about memorization when he says, I will not forget thy word. Because if it's not in your heart, if you've forgotten it, then you don't know it. And how can you keep it? Um, I love this too because you know, people are always so critical of us Baptists for, you know, preaching hard on sin and preaching on law. Don't you know Christ has freed us from the law and all this other stuff and, you know, we're free in grace and, and we don't have to worry about the law and the commandments. Well, Psalm 119 says, I will delight myself in thy statute. It's not a burden. The Bible says this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. It's not grievous. It's not a burden. It's not some chore to have to obey God's, God's commands. Actually, I love God's statutes. I love his commandments. I want to learn them. I want to know more fully about them because I know that they're for my benefit. God's laws are only to benefit us. It has no zero negative impact on you by obeying and following God's laws. Wouldn't you want to know how can, I, how can I live my best life now, right? How can I do that? Well, I'll tell you how you're going to do that. One, if you're not saved by getting saved, first of all, you have, you have to have that. But once you're saved, look, follow God's laws. Delight yourself in his laws. Want to learn them. Get that, get that wanting, um, get your soul stirred up. And I mean, once you have that understanding, and this is something that I understand more completely as a father than maybe, I, maybe before I was a father. But the rules, I think of all the rules that we have for our children, they will be better off if they obey all of my rules. Now, does it mean that their whole life is over if they disobey one of my rules? No. But they will be much better off if they listen and, and and obeyed all of my rules. And it's the same way with God. If we could just listen to and obey all of God's commandments, He has them there for a reason so that we can we could experience the best life that we possibly can in serving Him and in doing right and um, in having a, a great existence here. And, and I, I fully believe that. And that's why I don't think it's weird to say I delight in thy statutes and God in the law of God. Hey, that's great. I want to live as closely as possible to the way to the laws that God has, has given us so that we can we can live that great life. But let's let's keep reading. Look at verse number 22. He says, Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. So again, he's he's this is more of like a a prayer to God asking him to remove this reproach and contempt. 
Why? Why is he even able to go to God and ask for that? He says, because I've kept that testimony. Because I'm doing what's right. Because I know your words and I'm keeping them. And he says, you know, even though the princes also did sin and speak against me, princes, you know, people in high positions of authority and power. Hey, I had these people all speaking against me. He says, but your servant, he says, I meditated in your statutes. I don't care what the government's saying and they're reproaching me and they're coming down on me because I'm listening to God's law. Is what he's saying here. Princes sp spake against them. Princes are people in, in, in governing positions of authority. They're rulers. They're in charge. But he's com contrasting that to meditating on God's laws, on God's statutes. Because they're so much better than the laws of man. The laws of man, the vast majority of the time, are stupid. Except when they line up with God's laws. But, but you know, you get these people that want to control everything about your life. And half the time, they don't even make any sense. I mean, you read some of these laws and you're like, why would that ever be passed anyways? Why, you know, and, and they don't make any sense whatsoever. But God's law is perfect. And we ought to be meditating in his statutes. It says in verse 48, jump down to verse 48, Psalm 119. He says, My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved. And I will meditate in thy statutes. And then verse number 93, he says, I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. A good motivation for never forgetting God's word and never forgetting his precepts. Because with that, because God's word, God's precepts, he's saying, is basically what's given him life. And that's the truth. It's the word of God that, that gives you life. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's when your soul is quickened. It's made alive. You're born again through the word of God. And that, since God's word has life, another reason to want to keep that and to study that and to meditate on that and to think about that and to incorporate God's word into your heart because God's word is life and it's, and it's goodness and it's truth and it's something that, that we should never want to forget. Now, I also believe, to, um, look at, we're going to start reading verse number 97. We're going to read this whole section. Now, if you notice, Psalm 119 is kind of broken up. What it's broken up into are the different letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So it starts off with Aleph, Beth. This is like A, B, C, right in, in English. It would be like that. And these are broken up into all the different letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So in verse 97, it starts with Mem. And... Um, we're going to see here how meditating on God's word, memorizing God's word, I believe will literally make you smarter. It will make you more intelligent of a person. Let's, let's read this real quick. In, Psalm, in verse 97, the Bible says, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. He's saying, look, I'm smarter than my enemies. I'm even wiser than my own teachers, the people who are supposed to be teaching me knowledge. He said, I'm even wiser than them. Why? Why is he so much smarter than teachers? Why is he smarter than his enemies? Because he, he's loved his commandments and because thy testimonies are my meditation. He's always thinking on God's word. He's always reading it. He's always studying it. He's always thinking about God's word and meditating and memorizing God's word and keeping it in his heart. Look at verse number 100. He says, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refra refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Again, we see a, a, a a mention here of, of keeping his word and, and, and meditating on his precepts to helping you refrain your feet from the evil way, helping to, to prevent you from sinning. Verse 102, I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. God's word will make you smart. You will, you will start to gain more of an understanding 
the more you learn and study and know God's Word. Because God's Word, I mean, God's Word is life. God's Word is so powerful. It's not just printed words. It's not just like some novel that a man wrote. It's not just some good story. These words literally contain life itself. God's Word has eternal. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the life, but He is the Word. He is the Word that was made, that was manifest in the flesh. He is the embodiment of God's Word. God's Word is life and truth. It holds so much power. And that power, that enlightenment, when you have God's Word in your heart and in your mind and you're memorizing and studying it will illuminate your mind and your brain will help you to understand so many other things in this world. I fully believe that, that God's Word has that type of power and you will get that through memorizing His Word. Now, it's not something that happens overnight. This isn't something that you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to spend today, I'm just going to memorize this and now all of a sudden tomorrow, like, wow, I'm just so much smarter. No, this is something that happens over time. But it's amazing how people who really know their Bible and who really study the Bible, how intelligent they really are. I mean, those that are saved, that are, that are you know, they have the Holy Spirit in them and they're, they read and study God's Word. They, have, they tend, I've noticed that people have a, tend to have a lot of intelligence in many aspects of life, in many areas. You just, you just sit down and have some conversations with people and they're bright. They, they really get it. And um, I believe that God's Word can help us to do that, um, which is another reason why it's critical that that when we, you know, we homeschool our children, that they're going to be learning Bible a lot. We're going to teach them all kinds of stuff. We're going to teach them different subjects and everything else, but they are definitely going to get a high dose of Bible study and learning God's Word because that is just going to help them in the long run. And besides, I mean, this is truth. We know that for a fact. Science books, other things, history, you know, some of those things, maybe they're true, maybe they're not. I don't know. But this we know for a fact is truth. It's a fact. And um, this should be a, a, a very important area in your life in, in, of reading, not just reading the Bible, but also memorizing. Let's jump down to verse 148. Verse 148 says, Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Here he's, he's demonstrating how important this is to him. That mine eyes prevent the night watches. They're, you know, sometimes meditating on God's words is going to require you to stay up late because you're busy. You've got all kinds of things going on through the day, and maybe you don't have time to, you know, to, to work this in. You have to work it in somewhere, though. And it ought to be important to you, whether it's staying up late to do it, getting up early. You know, oftentimes, and here's the thing with memorizing, and I'm going to get to this, I guess, real, real quick, but um, you can do memorization in many different things you know if you can you know i'm not very good at multitasking i'll be honest with you i'm terrible at multitasking but one two areas where i can multitask when i memorize is one is getting when i get ready for work in the morning usually everybody's still asleep and i could get up and do my routine because my routine doesn't require much thought it doesn't require much thought to put toothpaste on a toothbrush and start brushing my teeth. It doesn't require much thought to take a shower. It doesn't require much thought to do, you know, to do these different things. There's like no thought involved. Well, when you're doing mindless tasks like that, hey, perfect opportunity to use that to start working on some memorization. But it's going to require a little bit of, of planning and, and getting it started in advance. You know, you're going to have to make available Bibles. For example, I mean, we have Bibles in just, just about or, or every single room of our house, right? I mean, I don't know if our girls' room actually has a Bible in it or not right now, but I think every single room in our house has a Bible in it. I think even our garage has a Bible in it. <laughs> They're everywhere, right? And this is something that, you know, if you're going to be working on memorization, it's real easy then to just be like, oh yeah, I wanted to memorize. Okay, here's a Bible right here. Pick it up and be like, boom, and start memorizing. But for one, it needs to be in your mind to want to do that. You have to make the conscious decision. Yes, I want to memorize God's Word. I see the importance of this. I can see all the benefit that I'm going to have by learning God's Word. I want to do this. And then you have to put that plan into action. 
Um, another great way to do it is if you know whatever sections of the Bible you're working on, you want to memorize, keep it on index cards. Um, I'll give you index cards if you want index cards. I mean, this is just a plain blank index card. There's nothing written on it. Write down the verses you want to work on. Keep it in your pocket. Or if you're a lady, you know, you don't have pockets, keep it in your purse or keep it somewhere somewhere where it's going to be with you so that when you're in the position where you have mindless things being done, you can just pull it out and start working on it. Because it can happen, you can have the opportunities to memorize and med meditate on God's Word in, in many areas throughout your daily life. Just think about your own day just on a regular basis. What, am I, what, do, I do, today? what do I do during a, an average day? And really think hard about that and say, when could I, you know, maybe for my wife, I mean, she's, she's got a lot of things, but she's really good at multitasking though. So maybe introducing something like this wouldn't be as difficult for her. For me, it's like I'm, a, I'm one track, like, okay, now I'm doing this. Now I'm, that's why I need to have the absolute simplest things <laughs> Where I'm, where I'm doing my memorization that, that require literally like almost no thought because it's hard for me to, to, to do other things. I get too distracted. I've tried it and, and I just get too distracted. I can't do, do multiple things at the same time. But like my wife, she's really good at it. She's watching the kids. She's cooking, doing, you know, cleaning, doing all these different things. Um, you know, maybe for her, putting up verses, which she's done in the past already, putting up the verses on the refrigerator, putting them up by the stove, putting them up in the bathroom, putting them up in places of your house where, oh, hey, look, it's right there. And you know, you're, you're doing things clean, just take a second, read the verse, and then you just keep repeating that verse to yourself as you continue doing whatever it was you were doing anyways. You don't have to take all this time out of your day to, to, to meditate on God's word if it's available, if it's right in front of you. Joshua chapter 1, you don't have to turn there, says in verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You want to be prosperous in your life? Do you want to have a successful life? He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. He says, you need to meditate in this day and night. It's that important. It's not enough to just say, well, I read the Bible sometimes, you know, every, every once in a while, or you know, maybe even once a day. He says, you need to meditate in this day and night. It's, this isn't even just a one time a day thing. He says, you need this law in your heart in your mind, study it, meditate. And meditation, it's not just reading. Okay, if you read the Bible, is that, do you really think that's the same as meditating on God's Bible? Because it, it, it's absolutely not. Let's say, you could, you could sit here and say, you know what? I'm a Christian and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I read my Bible every day. I read my Bible three times a day. Amen. I'm, I'm glad that you do that and you ought to do that and continue to do that. But I'll tell you what, that's not meditating. When you're meditating on God's word, you're thinking about it. You're, 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 you're consumed in it more. And, usually, and that's why the reading is very important. I mean, you need to keep going through this and, and keep ingesting this. But you also need to stop and think about some of these things too. You need to get that deeper and greater understanding from God's word that you get when you literally meditate on it. When I'm preparing for sermons, and I have certain points that I'm, that I'm trying to make or just studying out a subject. You, first thing, one thing you need to do is figure out where, is, where are the mentions, where does the Bible talk about these things. That you should be able to find easily because you're reading the Bible over and over again. You start to get this recollection. Oh yeah, it talks about this over here. Oh yeah, wait, I remember it talked about this in, in 1 Timothy. Oh yeah, I remember it talked about this here. You start to get that from your daily reading. But the studying and the meditating comes in when you can take that knowledge and then say, okay, yeah, I'm, gonna, you know, I'm really going to think about this subject. I really want to know more about this. I'm going to meditate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this. I'm going to read it over and over again. I'm really going to make this sink in. And this is one of the things that, that's another blessing, if you will, and one of the, the results of memorizing God's Word is that you always learn something new that you didn't know before. At least I do. 
I always learn some new, whether it be a nuance or a new, or like a truth that's just a, a greater understanding of it. When I memorize scripture, especially when we memorize like entire chapters, there are things that I hadn't thought of before and that I probably wouldn't have thought on except for the fact that I'm meditating on it and I'm thinking about it and I'm going over it over and over and over again in my mind as I memorize it, these truths are become more apparent because now your mind's really working on it and thinking about it and, and, and receiving that word a lot more fully into your heart. And um, that will make your way prosperous. That will make you successful, as I said in Joshua 1. The Bible says in Psalm 1, verse 1, the first, I mean, the very first psalm, the very first verse in the book of Psalms says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Again, a reference to day and night. Meditating in God's laws day and night. It's that important. It really, I mean, if it wasn't, then the Bible wouldn't say so good. There's an emphasis. Meditate on God's word day and night. This is so important to you. It's so critical. You could think like, well, no, if I want success, I got to go off to college. I have to get a degree. That's, that's the way I'm going to be successful. No. No, I don't care if you go to college or not, but that's not the path to success. The path to success is meditating on God's word, on God's laws and God's commandments day and night. The Bible says it. I know it's true. That's guaranteed to get you success. Now, I'm not saying that meditating is the same exact meaning or synonymous with memorizing either. But when you memorize, you are meditating on God's Word. When you, when you are doing that memorization, it is, it is, you are meditating. You don't always have to be memorizing in order to meditate on God's Word. You could be thinking about God's Word without really retaining it and memorizing it as much. Um, but, but when you are guaranteed to be meditating on it when you are doing the memorization and when you are making sure that you are retaining that and keeping that in to be able to, to reproduce and, and, and um, quote God's Word and say that word again perfectly when, as you've worked on memorizing it. Now, um, I'm just going to go over a few tips and things on, on how do I memorize the Bible. I'm not an expert by any means on the subject of memorization and what's the best technique and, and you know the absolute best way of doing things. But I'll share with you the way that I do it, the way that I have found works for me. And the, the main method I use is to, quite literally by repeating the verses over and over and over and over and over again. And just to give you an example, Okay, we've got our Bible memory. This is the last verse that we need to learn. So, the last verse for, for Titus 2 is verse 15. So, the verse reads, These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. What I do is I break that up into chunks. And whatever chunk I feel like I could handle, so I'll usually I'll be like, These things speak and exhort and, and rebuke. These things speak and exhort and rebuke. These things speak and exhort and rebuke. These things speak and exhort and rebuke. And in my mind, I'm kind of thinking like speak, exhort, rebuke, and try to figure out ways that I can remember the word order. Remember, you know, it's saying speak, exhort, rebuke. And, and as I'm repeating these things, I'm thinking, you know, uh, um, what do they words mean? Speaking. And I kind of get a visual image of speaking. And exhorting, well, that's a little bit different. You're encouraging people and then rebuking. You're telling people that that's wrong. And I'm thinking about all these things. And of course, it happens real fast. In your mind, you know, you're processing stuff real fast. But this is what's going on as I'm repeating in my mind. Just, just these things speak and exhort and rebuke. These things speak and exhort and rebuke. And, and you just start thinking about it over and over again. So then once I feel real comfortable with that and I know that, I, just, I start adding to that. These things speak and re 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 exhort and rebuke with all authority. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. I just go over and over, and then I just add a little bit more. Then add a little bit more. And when I learn chapters, I'll, I'll start doing that, and I'll start doing it from the first verse down. And um, after a certain amount, and I don't have a set amount of verses, but when I get to a big chunk, 
by that time, because I've been repeating that first verse every time I go through it and continue to add more to it. I mean, you'll know that that first the first part, you know, just you've got it down. So then I just start on a new chunk. And then and I'll just start working from like almost from scratch, right? I'll start, so I'll work on the next chunk of verses and do it the same way. And then I take the chunks and and start quoting them and repeating them over and over again with them being put together. Um, this is the way that I do it. Uh, another method that I used to use, I don't use it so much anymore because, because of my time constraints. Um, I, I need to really just be doing memorization. I usually do it when I'm driving in my car or when I'm getting ready for work in the morning. Those are typically the times that I'm, that I'm trying to, to do the memorization. I also listen to audio. Um, I don't even have it in my notes. I forgot. Uh, I'll, I'll have the Bible on audio and I'll put a chapter on repeat. And just listen to it over and over and over again. I haven't found that to be quite as effective as the re as just the repeating in my head, or as the other way I used to do it was is writing it down. You want to memorize scripture, you do a little bit of the chanting, and then and then start trying to write from memory, and write down what you know, and then check it, and then continue to write, because when you're actually taking the time to write out the verses it also gets a little bit more ingrained in your head and, and it helps you to memorize. You won't need probably as much repeat repetition when you're writing things um, over and over again because it, it requires more effort to do the writing and it kind of gets, like, I, you know, I think of when I make a list, if I have to go to the store and I'm going to make a list of things that I need, if I don't make the list, oftentimes I'll just forget a bunch of stuff because I just think like, oh yeah, I need this and this and this. And I'll go and be like, oh man, what did I need? But if I actually take the time to write out the list, nine times out of ten, I don't even need the list anymore. When I've taken the effort to actually write the things down, by the time I get to the store, I, I already have the list in my head and I just remember. I'm like, oh yeah, I need this and this and this. And then sometimes I'll double check and be like, oh yeah, I got everything. It, and I don't know why that works that way, but it just does. So if you want, if you want a little bit of, of help in memorizing your, your Bible verses, start writing them down. Look at the Bible, look back, and just you know, do, some, do some, some writing down. I think that will help you in your memorization. But again, that takes a little bit more of time to devote, to sit down and be like, okay, this is what I'm going to work on. And if you have that time, great. Use it to do that. Um, it, it'll, it'll only help you. And um, then, of course, continuing to repeat after learning it is the only way you're going to be able to retain it. So putting forth the effort to memorize, I think, is always good. It's even better if you can work on retaining the things that you've already learned. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really retain as much of the things that I've set forth to study and memorize. I haven't, I haven't been disciplined enough to make my schedule work to be able to, to maintain everything I've learned in addition to adding new stuff. Um, but I encourage you to do it if you, if you can. I, I really do. I know of, of a couple of people that do that and, and it is amazing and, you, and it's just going to open up your understanding. But, um, and it's just like anything. Using it is going to keep it fresh in your mind. And uh, the more you don't use it, the more you don't quote it, the more you just let it slip, it's going to go away. You're going to forget. And, um, but what, like one thing that never goes away, which is why the, the soul winning verses, there's verses that, that I typically go to with almost everyone I give the gospel to. I, I'll, I'll share these different verses with them. I've got all those memorized and they're not going away anytime soon because I use them all the time. So as you just keep these words in practice and in use, you're not going to forget them. And, um, you know, especially if you're memorizing verses that, that you really want to learn and that are going to pertain to you for getting rid of sin or whatever it is, hopefully you're going to keep that in your mind fresh and using them so that you don't forget them. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3, verse 15, this is the last place where have you turned. We're done in the book of Psalms. This is the last verse. We're almost done. 1 Peter 3, verse 15. We're just going to cover one more reason why memorization is so valuable and is so important. 
I mean, we've already seen it's going to help to give you success. We see you're going to learn a lot more. We're going to know God's commandments. It's going to help us not to sin. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And how you can be ready to give an answer to somebody. So when people ask you, you know, like, why, why do you have that hope in you? Why, why do you have your faith in Christ? Why do you, you know, believe that you're saved? Well, you can, give, you can always be ready to give an answer when you have God's Word memorized and you can just repeat it. You say, you know why? You know why I have this hope? Because the Bible says, and you can quote them God's Word. Say, this is why I believe that. This is why I have this hope. And you remember we were talking to, the, to those people today that was kind of a, a longer argument, if you will, um, about salvation. And I was able to quote a lot of verses to them. I was ready to give an answer. Say, well, why? Do, what about this? And they say, like, what about what about the parable of the virgins and the oil? What about this? Well, when you know God's word, you're ready to give that answer. When when you've studied it and meditated on it, and 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 it's there in your mind, and even just through reading. I mean, at the very at, at that moment, I was equipped with my Bible. And I try to always be equipped with my Bible, whether it's my little pocket Bible that's got the New Testament or it's a real Bible. I have Bibles at all times in my vehicles so I could, I could turn to stuff because I don't have everything memorized. I don't have the best memory um, as far as doing the memorization, but I kn I've read this book enough to when someone brings something to me, I'm going to be able to find it usually relatively quickly, unless it's something really obscure. Um, but for the for the vast majority of, of major doctrines that you're going to be talking to someone about, it's at my fingertips. But this is why memorization is so important, okay? Because you may find yourself in situations where you don't have your Bible with you, and there could be many reasons for that. But but let's just say you're you know, you don't have a Bible with you, but then a door is opened for you to preach the gospel to somebody or to talk about God's word or whatever. You have this great opportunity, and if you don't have God's word memorized, you're not going to be able to get that person saved because that, that person needs to hear the word of God, not just your interpretation, not just your understanding of God's word. They need to hear the word of God. So when it's memorized... You can quote God's word. You don't have to always have this book with you. You can, you can use that word to get somebody saved. And also, we, we've seen this before. Remember, I was talking to that Jewish guy. Um, and this happens quite a bit, actually. People get afraid and they want to end the conversation as soon as you start to open up the Bible. Because I also I like to show people. I don't always just like to quote because I want to, I want to show them, hey, don't take my word for it. Look, this is what the book says. It's written right here. You can see it for yourself. But a lot of people, as soon as you just, uh, you, you don't even have to say, I'm going to turn to the Bible. You just, start, you just go like this, and they'll be like, yeah, okay, I don't really want to talk anymore. Oh, I'm kind of busy. I don't have anything. And then you close the book, and you, do, you keep the conversation going, and they keep talking to you. It's, it's bizarre. It really is weird. But that's why, you know, it's, a, it's another, another tool you can have when you have God's Word in your mind. Because, like with that guy, I was quoting verses left and right, I was able to quote a lot of scripture without opening my Bible. And he was, I mean, he didn't receive the word, but he was hearing it. And that's our goal. We, we want to get God's word out there that hopefully one of God's words will, will pierce his heart to, to get him to, to change his mind, to repent, to, to put his faith on Jesus Christ. Um, that's the goal. So if we, if, we, it, if we need to not have to physically open this book to do it, then you ought to be able to do it through your, through your memorization of the verses. Now, um, Bible memory is important. And I, I haven't really stressed it very much in the past, but, but it is something that we need to, to incorporate into our lives. It's only going to help you. I mean, it, 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 the, the, uh, the benefits of memorizing are immense. But at the, at, the, at the very least, I would say this, as, as a very minimum, 
you know, if you don't want to participate in, in, in our in the verses that I pick, fine. That doesn't bother me at all whether you do or not. But but for yourself, for yourself, I would recommend finding the verses that you think are valuable and having those memorized. Start with the salvation verses. Start with the ones that you're going to be using anyways if you're going out soul winning. Start with that. It'll make it a little bit easier and hopefully just encourage you then because you'll, you'll get those ones down and then start moving on to other things and think about, you know, whatever, maybe one particular sin and, and memorize it and see what it'll do in your life. Now again, I don't think it's going to be like just this overnight thing but it will, it will help you and it will strengthen you. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your words. And I pray that you would please help us not to be forgetful. Here is not to forget your laws and your precepts, dear Lord, but to know, that, to know them and to love them. And that you would stir us up, help us to make the, the changes in our life necessary in order to start memorizing your word, dear God, in order to, to make it a part of our routines, in order to do whatever it is that we need to do to set the time aside, whether it be staying up late to do it, whether it be getting up early, I mean, whatever it is, whatever way that we need to do those things, God, I pray that you please help us to, um, to be diligent about meditating on your word, about, about keeping your word in our heart, dear Lord, and that we would uh, continue to grow closer to you and get the sin out of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.